Good morning and welcome to our monthly interview with Greene County Mayor Kevin Morrison. I'm Jim Miller sitting in for Reed Seals this week. And um, Mayor, first of all, it's good to have you here. I believe it's the first time we've sat down for one of these uh, monthly interviews here. So it's uh, it's good to have a chance to, to sit in with you this week. Good morning, Jim. I feel like I've upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what we have. We've both uh, seen the the budget process. Uh, the county has passed its budget on um, on Monday night during the uh, commission meeting, and we've both seen the process a lot of times over the years. And I can never remember a, a year where the budget process seemed to be as smooth and 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 less rancorous than this year. It passed unanimously. Uh, it, it didn't go into September. Uh, it just it seemed like that everybody was kind of on the same page. There was no tax increase this year. And j- just uh, talk about uh, how the, that budget process came about. Uh, this year and, and how you were able to keep uh, the taxes uh, not being raised? Well, Jim, uh, that's a good question, and we did have a good budget process. Um, my hat's off to the county commissioners. Uh, they have a hard job. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, some people do. Some people don't. Uh, we take it for granted lots of times that the 21 of them are sitting there charged with how to pay for things, how to pay for the services uh, and the different things that we need and use. But they did a great job. Uh, one of the things that did make it easier this year is is good uh, fiscal management. Uh, my hat's off and compliments to our uh, esteemed budget director, Danny Lowry. Uh, he does a tremendous job keeping his eye on the books and the bottom line. Uh, we've realized a tremendous amount of savings in the fact that we've not we've not overspent. We've not gone off the deep end uh, doing things, uh, particularly reoccurring bills uh, that we shouldn't be doing. Uh, We have great department heads. Uh, I think the department heads trust that the county commission and the government is not going to cut their budget um, if they don't spend all that they're allocated. And that creates a, a good culture of trust between the funding body, the county commission, uh, and the department heads knowing that they can spend what they need to, that they can purchase what they need to accomplish their mission without the fear of their budget being cut the following year. Um, The commission has a tremendous amount of trust also in that culture uh, for the department heads, knowing that these guys are only going to spend what they need to accomplish their mission, and they're not going to go out and buy toys or or, or build kingdoms, so to speak, with... uh, uh, equipment or manpower, and, and they do a tremendous job, and that has created a great culture amongst uh, everybody in government, really, to uh, keep their eye on the mission and and get it done without uh, without wasting taxpayer dollars and doing it efficiently, really. So um, we've got a few concerns with Fund 189 that we fund a few agencies out of. Uh, most of those are contributions to uh, nonprofits and different agencies around town, particularly, for instance, the partnership and different things. Uh, Fund 189 is funded with hotel motel tax. And with the uh, coronavirus being very prominent since uh, March, uh, people haven't been traveling. Therefore, that revenue line item is is down significantly. So we've got our eye on that to make sure that we fund our agencies uh, uh, fully and support those things that uh, that we need. Uh, for instance, particularly the partnership that uh, that basically the agency that showcases Greenville and Green County to uh, to the outside world for economic development, uh, restaurant, retail, industry, and business recruitment. Of course, that that mission has gotten considerably uh, tougher with coronavirus, but. Uh, uh, Greenville and Green County is doing a great job. Jeff Taylor down there uh, taking the reins uh, not too long ago and uh, doing a tremendous job down there. The other sort of line item of concern is the fuel tax. Obviously, once again, with people not traveling, uh, the fuel tax revenue coming into the county going directly to the highway department to fund uh, highway paving projects, uh, road construction projects, and with all of the rain and flooding that we've had, uh, that's a real concern. So there's going to have to be careful management for um, the fuel tax revenue coming into the highway department and how they manage things down there and Fund 189 that funds our agencies. Um, but 
the budget went very quickly. I know when I came to office in September of 2018, one of the goals that I had was to make sure that we that we pass a budget or have a budget in place prior to the start of the fiscal year, July 1st. Uh, Greenville has done this fairly consistently, and Greene County hasn't done it consistently at all uh, up until now. So last year's budget, the first budget I was responsible for, uh, passed prior to the fiscal year. Uh, this year's budget passed at, at our meeting uh, uh, here Monday night uh, without really tremendous fanfare, and as you pointed out, it passed unanimously. Uh, I don't know how long it's been since that <laughs> happened. I'm sure that's not a first, but it certainly has been a long time since I was a county commissioner. We always sort of waited until the last minute. Uh, you mentioned September. Lots of times it was even in October that uh, we would pass a budget. That doesn't lend itself really to good management and good efficiency for the department heads to be able to plan uh, what they're going to be doing. Uh, so we like to get that done. That also helps out with uh, with payroll and a lot of other things that begin July the 1st so that we don't have to go back and uh, and lick our calf over, so to speak, uh, once the uh, new fiscal year has started. But uh, but no tax increase. We've got an eye on the problem areas that we see, and uh, we're going to be rolling forward into a new fiscal year here July 1st and, uh, and handle all the emergencies that come our way, whether that be flooding, coronavirus, protests, whatever the case may be. And looking back at what's happened over the last three months, I don't think anybody could have predicted any of that just uh, just uh, one year ago. So you never know what's going to be coming up down the road. But one some things that will be coming up down the road are some uh, capital projects. And now that the budget is set, uh, what ideas do you have uh, or see that the county is going to be pursuing on a capital basis in the next fiscal year? Well, we've got a number of things that uh, that we've had on the burner that are complete. Uh, the purchase of the CCU building obviously being... Uh, we purchased that building in August. Uh, that building is complete. Now the renovations are done, and the agencies, the Election Commission, and the EMA are moved in. Uh, we will begin pretty soon after the uh, presidential election this fall, doing the planning and design work for the EMS substation that we're planning for the drive through up there. So that's a capital project that we've sort of got on uh on the back burner on simmer, so to speak. Um, that would be funded with uh, grant funding that will be coming uh, from the state. We've already sort of set that aside as a vision. Uh, so that will be one of the capital projects. Uh, one of the things that's ongoing right now is the uh, construction of a fuel station or a fuel point uh, to centralize and streamline, if you will, our fuel operations to save our taxpayers a tremendous amount of money. Uh, we figure with a very small capital investment of about $250,000, we'll be able to pay for that facility uh, in a period of two years or perhaps less and uh, be able to reap the rewards and the benefits of buying fuel and gasoline directly for all of our departments, thus freeing up a lot of money in the uh, department's that we pay in fuel surcharges and higher cost just because we don't have our own supply. So that's uh, that's another uh, project there. Uh, we've got the bids out on that. Construction will begin very soon. Uh, we've already uh, uh, decided a contractor. Petrol Services out of Kingsport is the one that won the bid. They have uh, ordered the tanks for that above-ground facility. That will be an above-ground facility. So that will be more environmental friendly as well, more efficient in terms of uh, key, card, key card service that will assign that fuel uh, draw directly to the department responsible for doing that. And we'll be able to service more of our departments, uh, more of our agencies uh, with the savings for that. Another capital project that's been ongoing for uh, some time, some 15 or 20 years as I can recall, is uh, 911 and Central Dispatch. Uh, I certainly want to complete that mission. Uh, Tim Ward and Wesley Holt have lent their uh, personnel over there to do dispatching for law enforcement, doing a tremendous job over there. But we need to be fully integrated 
uh, for Central Dispatch when 911 takes that over completely, and then we can release those personnel back to um, the Greenville Police Department and the Sheriff's Office, uh, respectively. Uh, but that's going to take some additional revenue. Our efforts to secure we made a trip down to Nashville to petition the state 911 board for additional funding uh, for our 911 district. Uh, that was very successful. We looked to obtain somewhere between 140 to 250 thousand uh, dollars in additional funding for our 911 district. Again, that would go directly toward funding uh, more dispatchers uh, to complete our uh, central dispatch. A project that we've got going. There's really no capital projects over there. That's more of a budgeting process and a and a personnel uh, table of organization, if you will, uh, to complete. And then the other project that's ongoing that will be completed in this next fiscal year will be the EMS headquarters, and it's moving from its location in the DOT on Summer Street over to uh, the Tacoma campus. Uh, there in the old sleep center that uh, Tacoma um, uh, benevolently gave away uh, to the county. So we're renovating that facility, and it will be done soon, and the move uh, there will be completed. And then the only other capital project that we've got going that we've learned from actually COVID-19 or coronavirus is the uh, uh, data and phone system upgrades that we've got going on across the county. Right now, the CCU uh, building, the election office, and EMA is complete, uh, wired for 21st century data and communication. Uh, that has spilled over to the highway department and solid waste. Uh, very soon, um, the sheriff's department, the jail, and the workhouse is being uh, handled uh, down there in in-house, actually, and then our hired contractor is going to be completing that same work at the courthouse and then the annex would be the last facility to come online with new data uh, wired with cat six and new uh, phone system uh, that would replace a phone system that's currently over 30 years old so those are the capital projects that we've got going uh, a lot of them ongoing now and we hope to complete them by next year one other issue that is uh, going to be uh, dealt with is, is the landfill with, uh, with uh, operations of that. And just uh, let it, uh, tell the audience uh, what, where that stands right now. Well, the, uh, the city and the county are entering into an agreement, and we've done a lot of good, successful negotiation to, uh, to take over the legacy landfill that's out there on uh, – Old Stage Road, as well as the transfer station and the demolition landfill, uh, being taking construction waste and old furniture and wood and that sort of thing. And that begins July the 1st. Uh, the city, in, in our agreement, would be responsible for the demolition landfill and the legacy landfill that uh, Greenville operated years ago. The county would be responsible for the transfer station, the scale house, and then the transportation of our garbage uh, down to the GFL landfill in Morristown. So we're in the process of actually doing two contracts, one with GFL in Morristown to dispose of our garbage in the landfill there at Lowland uh, at the old Inca site. Uh, they're close to the old Inca site. And then the other is a contract between the county and the city uh, to jointly operate the transfer station in the landfill. Um, and it just has to do with details of mowing, maintenance, uh, liability, insurance, uh, equipment, and that sort of thing. Personnel also falls in there. We think that uh, we've been negotiating, uh, myself, Danny Lowry, uh, Roger Woolsey, and Jim Green, our director of solid waste, with, with Todd Smith, the city administrator, uh, the mayor, W.T. Daniels, and the director of public works, Brad Peters, uh, Brad's pretty much taken the lead for the city, and I think we've done an excellent job at coming to a good agreement that everybody can support uh, to do this beginning July the 1st. So uh, that's quickly approaching, and we will we will take over operations and responsibility for all of that on Wednesday, July the 1st. Well, it'll, that's just around the corner, just a couple weeks away. Anything else that's uh, going on right now that uh, the audience uh, might might be interested in, in hearing about? Well, that's a that's a pretty full plate there, Jim. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, we uh, 
we seem to up the tempo, and with the addition of coronavirus and other things, uh, the operational tempo around around the county, uh, that's sort of my leadership style is to continue to push and push and push for efficiency and the accomplishment of the mission. Uh, and that uh, that drive has been met enthusiastically by our employees. I'm so proud of them through all of this whole process as I as I go to the different facilities and agencies and I see them working hard every day uh, for the taxpayers we are sworn uh, to serve. Uh, it gives me a good feeling inside and I sleep very well at night knowing that Greene County is very well taken care of. Well, uh, we appreciate your time here this morning and uh Hope that uh, now, now that the budget's put to bed, you can uh, get maybe uh, sneak in a vacation or two before uh, <laughs> things get ramped up again. Um, Green County Mayor Kevin Morrison, thank you again for your time this morning, and uh, thank you to uh, um, for the chance to sit in. Uh, this has been for Reed Seals today. I'm Jim Miller, and uh, have a great rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.